Welcome back to the second episode of Loki with your boys Eli and Drew. Hey, how are we doing? Uh, doing good. Doing good. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's uh, I'm, it's a lot to, to to talk about. Yeah, what can I say? I mean, I feel like uh, banging. I think this episode. I mean, <laughs> to use a very interesting word to describe how good this episode was. You know? Yeah, it's 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 really good. It's. There's a bit of Wes Anderson vibes to it, in my opinion. Really? In terms of, I guess, the... Uh... Some of the shot compositions. Yeah, I guess I can understand where you're coming from with that. Yeah. Um, especially when it comes to, uh... Um... Uh, probably the scene <laughs> uh, with Sylvie at the McDonald's, right? Is yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think I know what you're getting at there. Um, but yeah, um... It's a solid, another solid episode, but let's just sort of get into, I guess, the, the meat of the, the, the episode, right? Yeah, so essentially, there are people who work under a certain uh, person that are sort of gone rogue. Uh, Doc was the, uh, yeah. the, the, I think he's like, what, Scottish or something? Yeah, the yeah. Scottish lady in the first episode that's like, we got to find Taylor, you know? Yeah. She's behind all this. Um, terrible Scottish accent, by the way, just yeah. butched that completely. Yeah. Um, but... Yeah, that sort of like you know followed through that last plot line basically. Um, so I think the the one dude we saw that was talking to Doc mm-hmm. in that episode was sent to go find Sylvie. Mm-hmm. So they find him in a separate, uh, I guess, on the separate timeline, uh, being an actor. Yeah, because apparently he was an actor at one point. Yeah, I think that like he basically went to, back to his original role on the Sacred Timeline mm-hmm. as undercover, basically, mm-hmm. is what they're saying. And, you know, they do, like, an interesting chase scene. We get to see Loki do his tricks to God magic stuff. Very fun. <laughs> yeah, which, I mean, I won't lie, that that is sort of a, a cool thing to see. Because uh, I do think that one of the things with uh, MCU Loki is that you don't get to see him do as many of, like, the illusions and magic stuff. Mm-hmm. Right? I was going to say what also is kind of interesting is that this... And I, and I felt like this was always kind of the thing with Loki, is that it gets a very... Um, uh, Doctor Who vibe. Yeah, yeah, the exploring different uh, periods of time and, like, getting to see the characters dress up and, mm-hmm. like, that era. They, that they're era going stuff. very hard on this one. Yeah, no, I definitely, uh, definitely feels like that, right? Yeah, but essentially they catch him and they're trying to figure, like, okay, what, what's Doc doing and also, what were you doing? Yeah, like, did you find Sylvie? Yeah. Like, being, like, the big other question, like, because he was... Obviously, they're, like, trying to find Sylvie, and Doc is planning something. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that sort of thing. And they do an interrogation room thing, and obviously, uh, mm-hmm. I think the hunter's name is X2, right? Yeah. But it, it, they call him Brad, because that's basically his actual name. Yeah. Right? So, uh, you know, he, got, he gets under the skin of both Loki and Moebius, but you assume Loki would be the one to flip out. But no, he, he manages to keep his composure, right? Mm-hmm. It's Moebius that flips out, you know? Because, <clears throat> like, even he's, like, bothered by, like, okay, what was my life? Yeah, because that's... Who was I? Because, yeah, like, that's sort of Brad's thing. You're like, yo, we all have lies about this. None of this is real. Why are we still, you know, trying to cling on to the TVA, all right? Yeah. We could all go back to our lives and Moby is like, shut the hell up. And, you know, he walks out of the room and like, yo, whoa, whoa. Even Loki's, like, <laughs> weirded out, like, yo, I've never seen you like this. Yeah, it, he's, <laughs> he's tense because, like... One, the the situation is going on, but also like the the whole idea that he had a life, like the 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 reason why um was it uh the the chick what was her name uh the uh, the other hunter right yeah, yeah the other uh, hunter B twelve right B twelve yes when she finds out she's like she's almost moved to tears <laughs> yeah at the life that she'd lost. And the life that she could have had, mm-hmm. and then now like, she she's uh she's kind of like more of the head now. She's like the one with the moral compass, especially now as we see towards the end. Yeah, uh, like uh, even she's no longer in that hunter uniform anymore. She's just in like a regular business suit sort of stuff. Sort of yeah, like, taking that higher, I guess. Because she's the first one to figure it out. Yeah, like she has like a bit more responsibility and stuff. And yeah, and she uh, she's probably the only one level headed enough. Yeah. While, like, Loki and the Mobius are out hunting for Sylvie and hunting for Doc. So it only yeah. makes sense for that, for that, for her. Plus, like, she's the only character we're being introduced to who could take the lead. <laughs> yeah, at this point, right, with yeah. Renslayer gone and clearly the council being sort of, like, you know, trying to figure out what to do. Mm-hmm. Like, she clearly seems to be taking up that sort of, like, all right, I'll be mm-hmm. 
leading operation stuff, making yeah. sure everything runs smoothly here. Yeah. You know. Um, but yeah, you know, there's that stuff. Uh, they do find like uh, I think Brad had a temp pad, you know, like little thing that allows them to like travel to different timelines and stuff. They send it to Orbers, Orbers to like figure out like, hey, this the, he messed with it. We need to figure out, you know, what's up with it. And he's like, fuck you guys, I'm busy trying to fix this. Here's the manual. Yeah, pretty much. Um, meanwhile, obviously the uh, as we get back to B12 and uh, why am I forgetting his name? Uh, oh, the the Latino dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, isn't it? But anyways, uh, because yeah. it, it, I want to say it starts with a C. Yeah, uh, Casey, it's Casey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, because Casey's job is trying to find Ren, you know, Ren Slayer, right? Yeah. Make sure like if her temp pad's pinged, you know, like we'll find her because you know, she has to answer for some very, you know, she has to answer for her questions, right? Yeah, like. Mm-hmm. She's, been, she's been lying the entire time. What's up with that? And uh, obviously Loki reveals like, hey, yeah, she, she's probably working with uh, the human remains. We need to figure out what all that's about. Mm. But uh, what uh, the main important thing is that Casey sees the temp as like, oh, this thing wasn't like used to like block signals. But it is, it is, uh, you know, it was modified for some reason. Yeah, which we'll later find out in the episode. But you know. They get it, you know, they try to interrogate, uh, Brad, obviously, that's where we sort of come back to that thing, mm-hmm. and they go for a second round, uh, except, uh, Loki does a little bit of a, you know, you know, like, bad cop. Yeah. <laughs> he was the bad cop. Yeah. Because it, it, it's one of those things, like, you forget, this is Loki. He, he got the guy's eyes out. Back yeah, to the like, one. at this point, it's like, because, like, uh, you know, Brad was like, yeah. like, you're not the hero type, dude. You gotta stop, you know, you're a villain. And it's like, oh, you know what? I am. Yeah. It's like, it's like uh-oh. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I, I might have kicked the hornet's nest here. Yeah. Because, <laughs> like, like he's, he's like, you, you're meant to be a villain. <laughs> yeah. That's who you are. That's what you are in this timeline shit. Yeah. That's who you are. Because he's been, the whole time, he's like, we should be going back to what we were. You're a fucking villain. You should act like the villain. It's uh-huh. like, why, thank you. Wait, no, that's not what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, classic, like, uh-oh, I've made a mistake here. And, you know, they trap him in, like, this little box that's constantly shrinking. So he's, like, he's going to cr- get crushed to death. Eventually he reveals what he what his whole game, like, the whole plan was, is that, yes, he was supposed to find Sylvie. However, he, instead of being undercover, he straight up just ditched the mission because he wanted to go back to his life. Yeah, he, he, he found out he was a movie star. And it's like... Yeah, I mean, why wouldn't you go back to that life, right? Yeah. Screw hunting people through different timelines. I just want to be a movie star. I'm fucking rich and famous, dude. Yeah. Um, but anyways, yeah, he did find Sylvie. So he did, like he agrees to, like, hey, I'll show you where I found her. Mm-hmm. Just let me live my life again, please. Yeah. I don't want to do all this nonsense. Like, all right, fair. All right, we'll do that. And I think uh, we see a little uh, sort of side plot with Ouroboros. Yeah. That he's trying to fix the uh, temporal... Um, fool. Yeah. You know the timeline, and he notices that he can't like unlock the blast doors without somebody's like specific key. key, key. Yeah, yeah, key. And it's like, well, how do we do this? And then we have a little bonding moment between him and Casey, where Casey's like, "Hey, wait, you're Ouroboros? You're the guy that wrote the, the TVA manual?" It's like, yeah, yeah, that's me. Yeah. It's like, oh my god, I, you're my hero. Yeah, like I read this entire book, <laughs> like back, back and forth. forth. Yeah, it's like, you have? <laughs> no one's read my book. <laughs> yeah, it's like <laughs> they keep asking me for shit. Yeah, it's like, can you autograph it? And then in the, the B12, like, all right, first of all, let's... <laughs> shut, shut up. Let's, let's get back to the situation at hand here, right? Because our board is so lonely. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a fun little character bonding moment that he's like, oh, you like my stuff? Oh, my God, I can't believe it. <laughs> yeah, because they're both, like, the most, like... Introverted, like, you know, characters that, like, sort of just, like, very timid about stuff. Yeah, it's what happens when you when you meet, like, a nerdy dude. Right? It's like, oh my god, we've bonded. Yeah, it's like, it's like oh my god, are you my best friend? <laughs> yeah, from so, Like, whenever you just happen to run into a guy who's, like, just into the same anime you are, and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Brother! <laughs> we just become best friends? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that, that, that's what it is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, anyways, the, uh, so, Loki, Mobius, and Brad head to uh, where Sylvie's at, which yeah. is still at the McDonald's. And you know? man, do they stay at McDonald's, stay there at McDonald's for a while. Well, yeah, because, uh, you know, we have this very tense moment where Loki and Sylvie see each other again, and Loki's just trying to get the uh, the courage to, like, 
be like, hey, uh, how's it going? Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, hey. when you meet your ex. <laughs> yeah, it's like, hey, I need to talk to you. All right, well, my break's in five minutes, so we'll we'll wait till then. <laughs> and Brad, the entire time, is just so, like, uh, gear in the headlights. Yeah. So he's like, I, I, can we just leave? Like, we're, we're done here, right? It's like, no, no, no. Well, he's like, no, I'm going to get myself an apple pie, all right? <laughs> it's like, oh, come on. <laughs> at this point, it's just product placement. A little bit. Like, at least they're not looking straight into the camera as, like, try McDonald's new apple pie or whatever. Like, look at all, <laughs> look at this Loki uh, little uh, toy you get in your uh, M- uh, McDonald's kids meal, you know? Um, but anyways, they have a conversation, obviously. Have it your way. <laughs> That's Burger King, not McDonald's. Yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, you know, Loki and Sylvie have a conversation, right? Mm. You know, he... Loki talks about seeing her in the future mm-hmm. at the TVA, and she's just sort of like, I don't care about any of that stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm living my life here. I've done what I needed to do. You she's know? the only competent employee at McDonald's, which is so hard <laughs> to find nowadays. And this is back in, like, the 80s, so, you know, that's that's saying something, that's right? saying a little bit. If it was in that current day, yeah. Yeah, but, um, you know, like, she's pretty much just like, I give him people free will. You know, this that's... I've, I've done my part. Yeah. I don't want to deal with any of this TVA stuff anymore, all right? Mm-hmm. Like, leave me alone. <laughs> and Loki's like, hey, listen, all right? We have a bunch of shit going down. Hell, when he who remains and all his variants show up, what are you going to do then? And he's just sort of like, I'll kill them all. Yeah. Killing the first one wasn't, you know, that hard. Although, obviously, I feel like... The second one just let her kill him. Yeah, I feel like... I mean, I'm just saying, right? Yeah. Like, I, it might be hard for her to take down a legion of Kangs. I'm just going to point that out. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyways, you know, it becomes clear that um, Brad did not mention to Mobius or Loki that, you know, what Doc's plan was. Because at that mm-hmm. point, in, uh, you know, Mobius starts questioning, like, wait, did you set us up? It's like, no, 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 no. I just, I just want to really get out of here. He's like, okay, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. They figured something out. They're like, he's being way too jumpy. Yeah, it's like, all right, what, what, what's going on here? And that's when Brad reveals Doc's plan, which is to, you know, as we saw in the episode before, he was getting a lot of stuff. It's like, that's way too much overkill for Sylvie. What's going on here? Now we know. Uh, Doc was planning to just mass prune all of the timelines. A, oh, I don't like to throw this word so lightly right now. But a lot of people I've seen online compared to like damn near genocide. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, because and even um, because she eventually succeeds. Well, yeah, I think she prunes a good like I want to say at least eighty percent because we see so yeah we see like you know all the branches that are like you know being disappeared as the plan happens. Loki, Mobius, and Sylvie all go mm-hmm. to uh, stop her while they send Brad back to the TVA. He, you know, like, it's a very quick, like, re- resolution, but it's very much, like, a too little too late. Yeah. Because by the time they get back to the TVA, they see just how devastating it is. And it's, it's, it's just uh, B, uh, B12 saying, like, all these timelines, all these lives, gone. <laughs> Yeah, like, those are people, you know, that's, yeah. that's what she it, says. It's one of those things where if you just take it as it is and rather than just sit and, like, dwell in the possibility of what is going on, that is essentially, like, like horrifying, right? They essentially killed... I, I can't even I can't come up with a number for it, because that would be... Trillions. Trillions of people of, of, like, lives. And, like, yeah, it's, they're all, like, you know, variants and stuff, but that's still, like, as as we've seen from, like, Sylvie and the season's fire with the multiple other Lokis, they have their own lives to live. Yeah, they all, you know, mm-hmm. were different. They all had lives and stuff like that, right? Like, yeah, it is one of those things of, like, it's, it's definitely a thing that I think is carrying over. Mm-hmm. You know, it's probably, like, one of the main arching themes of the uh, series. Like, yeah, like, listen, you know, it, it it provides that conflict, right, of, like, he who remains is technically right, you yeah. know? Like, you know, a Kang dynasty, if you will, yeah, will ultimately lead to multiversal war and lead to millions of deaths, or b- trillions, billions, yeah. and all that stuff. 
So he was right in like he wanted to like make a cigarette timeline so that way there wouldn't be something like that to happen. But at the same time, you know, you look at the reality of like, well, you're just killing so many different people just because they're all variations of that timeline and stuff, right? It's it's one of those where it's like it's a it's a it's it's like a very complicated moral question when you think about it, right? Yeah. Because, like, he's, like, obviously there there's always a chance that there's, like, an evil version of yourself out there, yeah. But, like, whether or not to kill or, you know, destroy the entire timeline is in itself, like, questionable. It it gives, it harkens very much to, like, a, uh, a moral question that was put in, because obviously they're gearing up for secret wars, and clearly they're expiring, expired by, inspired by uh, Jonathan Hitman's uh, take on the spirit, uh, super, Secret Wars, which was like a multiversal thing, and in that one, I think there was a, not in that book, but the lead up to it, right, there was an Avengers book of like, uh, we might have to destroy some, some time, some, you know, some worlds uh-huh. to save ours, and then they get confronted by like an alternate universe superhero team, and it's like, we can find a way, what if, we can help each other find a way, help, what are you guys doing? Uh, we destroyed some, you know, Earths. I'm like, you monsters. You're total monsters. <laughs> <laughs> kind of stuff. It's, it's that kind of shit, right? It, it kind of harkens to, to that vibe. And I and I really do like like uh, what, what Loki is doing right there. I feel like out of all the Marvel shows right now, this one's setting up the multiverse stuff a lot better. I mean, yeah, even... Like, it also, like, going back to the last episode, it sets up the threat of Kang so well. Mm -hmm. Just that, you know, I I know people were kind of at least a little upset, miffed, I guess is the right word, of uh, Kang in uh, the Ant-Man movie, mainly in just how he was beaten. Yeah. Right? Because it's like, oh, this is supposed to be our next big bad guy, and he gets beat by Ant-Man. Yeah. (laughs) You know, it's like, well, I mean, the idea of Kang is more of, like, there's a lot of them. Yeah. Right? This isn't just a Thanos type of like, oh, I you know I have all one these villain stones, stones and I yeah. can just wreck people. It's like, no, try a bunch of crazy, super smart people that have pretty much technology that's so advanced that you can consider it magic or whatever. Yeah, all gang, you know, all joining forces there to kick your ass. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's the threat of Kang that there's a bunch of them, right? Yeah, and they all have like various, you know, they're variants. Yeah, like, they're all hinged on wanting just complete domination and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. It's it's the thing that where, like, the, the character of He Who Remains and the king we see in, in, in Quantumania and the king that we're eventually going to see later on in the show are completely different characters. Mm-hmm. And just because that you are, we assume that they're all the same, that they all should be the same, but no, there's, each one has their own, like, unique thing about themselves. And each one is just more and more dangerous than the last. Yeah, that's kind of what they're going with. That's why the the character of He Who Remains is like, oh, we're all fucking dangerous. Uh, let's avoid all this shit. I mean, yeah. I mean, heck, yeah. Like you said, when we do see Kang in the show, because he obviously is. I, I do remember the the one little teaser from uh at the end of Lo- uh no uh, of the Ant-Man movie, right? Where it's like yeah. they see like that variation of. Of Kang, it's like, really, this is the guy? And Loki is just like, no, listen, all right? Mm. He may look different, or at least he may not seem like it, but he is as dangerous as everybody else, mm-hmm. as these guys, right? And that's kind of the, the point. I think that's also why, like, a lot of people kind of, like, take um, an offense, uh, not offense to disliking to how that was treated. Mm-hmm. And I think originally that anime was supposed to have, like, a more darker ending where he was stuck into the quantum realm. But honestly, that honestly, I feel like that doesn't make more sense. I mean, yeah, I could see it happening like that too because, I mean, you have uh, Scott's daughter Cassie mm-hmm. having an Ant Man suit too, mm-hmm. and it does seem like a lot of what Phase this like you know this multiverse arc is trying to set up is like the next generation of heroes. Mm-hmm. I mean, I feel like you know that's partially the reason why. You know, you have Cassie in that sort of role where, like, oh, she's going to be learning to be the next Ant-Man or Ant-Girl or whatever. Mm, yeah. You want. I think he's called Ant-Ling, right, in the mm. comics? Uh, no. No, is that the, not the name? Not the... No, she goes by a different name. I just don't remember what the top of it, off the top of the head was. 
Yeah, but point is, like, she essentially... Because I feel like that's what a lot of uh, the, uh, you know, like, this current phase of the MCU is going to... is trying to do, which makes sense, because you do have a lot of, you know, aging stars, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like, as much as you would like to see uh, Benedict Cumberbatch play uh, Doctor Strange for, like, years to come... Specifically called uh, Stinger and Girl, but the one I always remember was Stature. That's I, I I won't lie. Probably out of all those, Stature is kind of the best name. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, uh, that's sort of. Mm, I think a, a theme that sort of is surrounding that, and it's probably why a lot of people aren't as that into the MCU, or at least because it's like, yeah, like sure, Spider Man's gonna be there and all you know all that stuff, but it's like it just kind of hard to get with the next gen when you yeah. have all your previous, you know, uh, characters that you like are, are just no longer going to be there. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, that's just sort of the reality of, like, <laughs> these movies, right? You can't... As much as I would like to have seen, like, you know, Robert Downey Jr. stay Iron Man for, like, these mm -hmm. next past couple of years, like, he I has think, a life, too, you know? He yeah. wants to make other movies. I think Same it's thing also, with Chris Evans, right? Yeah, I think it's also just, like, it's weird. It's, they're very stretched out into things. I mean, have you heard about the recent, like, talks about actually getting showrunners now for the shows? Which, I won't lie, that actually surprised me a little bit. Yeah. When it comes to, oh, wait, so this is how they've been running the uh, Disney Plus Marvel shows? That's actually kind of strange. I, I, it seems it's a bit unconventional. Yeah. Cause I, I mean, yeah, I know the idea is that like for at least a lot of these shows, different. Uh, like well, for a lot of these shows, mm -hmm. you know, they're very, they're supposed to be like limited series. They're not supposed to have like a second season and stuff. They're supposed to wrap mm -hmm. it up. But we talked about it, right? The, the pro, like a lot of the problems with that is just that it feels. Not very paced well. You yeah, know? not very paced well, not very well thought out. It feels like we're trying to like get to point A to point B without really focusing on a lot like of developing stuff. it naturally yeah. and that stuff. Yeah, right? yeah. Where like if, if it was a show, it, it feels a lot more you know, uh, right. And I, I find it so funny that we they that that honestly it makes a lot more sense considering how most of these shows have been. Like obviously like you know Loki and WandaVision are the exception because I think those were the first two to be developed. That and like Winter, uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yeah, I feel like uh, yeah, those three shows definitely have that mantra where like okay, they haven't. I mean, obviously Loki has good like was probably the best out of all of them. Mm. WandaVision, you know, was that, that was meant to be a short form series. Yeah, you you definitely feel that. I mean, granted, a lot of people may have issues with how it ends. Mm -hmm. You know, which is like a understandable, you know, classic like I am you, but evil fight, let's go mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And I, I mean, I liked Falcon and the Lone Soldier. I know some people were like kind of, eh, that's mid, you know. Yeah. But I liked it enough. Um, but yeah, the rest of the shows all have like these weird like pacing problems and issues, and it's just sort of like, eek, eh, you know. Yeah, I like how people are starting to find out how shows are being made where you need a showrunner. You need a show Bible and all that stuff. Well, I mean, I feel like most people don't really get into the nitty gritty of like the behind the scenes of making a show, yeah. right? It's, it, you know, there's a lot of collaboration and decision making. It's not just like, oh, let's just put the writers in a room and they'll figure out whatever and we'll just film it then, right? It's like, there's a lot of like, thinking and like planning out stuff usually i mean heck i remember in screenwriting classes that's one of the things when you talk about making a show like you want to have like some form of like yeah like a plot like a story bible kind of thing where like okay like it's just sort of like a uh not a dictionary like a, um like an appendix yeah of all the stuff that you need to know about various characters or various locations it's like and from there, the writers will, like, okay, let's bring it all together into a story kind of thing, right? Like, oh, what it, about this? Let's go to the story by it. Let's do, you know. Would that make sense with what we're trying to write? Yeah, you know, that sort of thing, right? And the thing, too, with, like, a, you know, a showrunner, like, they're not the director per se, but it's sort of like a in between of, like, a director and a producer kind of thing. Like, they have, essentially, they have the vision, and they sort of go with it, right? Mm-hmm. 
so that's sort of like where like that all that leads into yeah no it's one of those things where like i said i think it's 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 uh i mean people aren't gonna know off the top of their heads what's what but i I find it interesting how people are just now starting to learn and find out what these things are and how like the process of making not only just movies and the tv is like very very difficult it's not as easy as you know it's it, there's more to just to it than just writing like when we were talking about uh how films are made usually like a page is a minute of in the script uh-huh. and then people will be like what do you mean a page is a minute a page is a minute yeah <laughs> yeah like straight up try to find like a script from like a movie or a show or whatever online and just compare it to like how it's actually mm-hmm. done that's it, it's it's crazy when you say it but when you actually look at it it's like oh <laughs> like, and you also got also the things that get cut there might be in the script and then later taken out because well i mean yeah because you have rewrites and like sometimes you're like okay well that doesn't work well in our story i mean that's the thing about like making shows and movies and stuff like there's always constant changes up until the the uh the final release i mean Granted, this is a bit of a different situation, yeah. but the, the fact that the ending scene for uh, in, uh, Across the Spider-Verse, oh, where yeah. Gwen gathers up uh, whoever wants to join her to save Miles and stuff, was done like, within like the last couple weeks before the movie came out, sort of just shows you that, like, yeah, things are still worked on and that stuff, but also, <laughs> on, a, on, a, on a separate tangent, right, like, yeah. it shows, like, wait, you mean to tell me we had the animators working, like, three couple weeks before the movie came out on this? Is that is that crunch? Is that why the movie kind of felt like it, it could have ended like maybe fifteen minutes earlier? I, 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 <laughs> you know, it's like a lot of those like questions, like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> and as much as cool as the scene is, like, mm, I don't know about that, boss. Yeah, you know, but it, I mean, it maybe, yeah, but yeah, it's, crunch aside, that's I would not recommend it. But like, yeah, no, there's always changes and stuff like that. Um, but, but back to Loki, because this one feels more con- concrete, you know, this is what we're doing, this is what we want to do, and it feels more right. Obviously, now that stuff has happened, we got to wait and see where it goes, because Sylvie's like, I don't want any of this. And obviously, they're, this is setting up for them to look for Kang. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, no, I'm very excited to see where this goes. I think Loki is probably still the best show out of all <laughs> of all the Marvels. Uh, yeah, I would definitely agree with that. Yeah. I, just the way things are shot, the mm-hmm. way the story has played out so yeah. far, like all of it just feels like, yeah, this is this is neat. This is interesting. It handles the idea of the multiverse very well, mm-hmm. and you know, it's like it's like I don't know, it's just like a nice, cool like experience, mm-hmm. and I kind of want to see where we go. You know? Yeah. And I'm with you on that. And that's where we're put the end to this episode, guys. If you enjoyed what you heard, be sure to follow us on all social media, subscribe, Facebook, and Twitter. We're just most active on Instagram. Be sure to follow us on YouTube. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. We are on every podcasting site available. So, yeah. If you guys enjoy, let us know. And that's about it. Also, we have a Patreon. Yeah. This is me, your boy, Eli. This is me, Joe. You guys have a good one. Peace.